This is Closer Look. I'm Rafael Sierra here with Rodney Wilson with the American Red Cross. Rodney, thank you so much for joining us today on Closer Look. Thank you so much. In the spirit of helping out your neighbor, uh, the American Red Cross has a long history of uh, being involved with the community and helping others, you know, especially when it comes to collecting blood products. The Red Cross is the largest blood bank in the United States. Um, we collect um, or need to collect about 14,000 blood donations every single day to help patients at more than 2,000 hospitals, almost 3,000 hospitals across the country. It's a, a big need. And um, it's not possible without generous people just willing to roll up a sleeve and, and give a pint of blood. Blood needs. What does that look like right now as far as, you know, what you have available to where you would like to be? Well, during the pandemic, uh, we've had a lot of challenges in making sure that there's enough blood available for medical needs for, for patients. Patients are still in the hospital. They still need um, surgeries and transfusions and treatments. And, and our biggest challenge during the pandemic is that many of the places where we host blood drives, like schools, churches, community centers, they have been closed and not able to host those drives. So we've struggled with having enough locations to host our blood drives. So one of our big focuses is increasing the number of blood drives that we have, finding new locations to host blood drives. Um, so we encourage any, anyone who um, has a site, whether it's your, your own business, your church, um, your community organization, where you feel like we could have a blood drive and set up there, um, contact the Red Cross and we would love to work with you to make that happen. And having said that, is the need growing or diminishing, you know, as compared to the last couple of years? In the very beginning of the pandemic, um, many blood drives, thousands of blood drives canceled, and we didn't have enough blood to meet the current patient needs. But as the pandemic went on, many hospitals started to postpone surgeries, which means the need for blood went down. Um, now that we are more than a year into the pandemic, hospitals um, are adding back in those surgeries and the need for blood is going up again. So it, it, it's uh, really been a challenge for us to uh, just monitor what the hospitals are doing and make sure that we're responding and collecting enough blood at the right time to make sure patients get the, the transfusions they need. This is Closer Look. I'm Rafael Sierra here with Rodney Wilson with the American Red Cross. Rodney, how often can a person donate blood? Yeah, you can give blood up to six times a year. It's every 56 days. And uh, we would encourage more people to do it. Sadly, only about 3% of the population has ever donated blood. So it's a really small number. Uh, we would love to have more people giving. Okay. And what about age groups? You can be, you can start donating blood at age 17. Or in some states, um, you can have a signed parental consent form at 16 and donate. And then um, there's no upper age limit for blood donation. So as long as you are healthy and feeling well, you can donate blood until you're 100 years old if you live, if you're blessed to live that long. Fantastic. And are there any substitutes for blood? Because, you know, there may be some people out there thinking that, hey, you know what, uh, maybe if I do need a blood transfusion, maybe they can just put in something that's that, that'll work kind of like blood. Is there any such thing right now? Yeah, that's a, a good point. Um, blood can only come from other people. So it's not something that we can just create or manufacture or put, uh, make a substitute that works like blood. Um, it can only come from other people that are just willing to donate it. It, it doesn't grow on trees. You know, I always, always uh, use that as an example of people just think that when they go to the hospital, you just assume that all of the um, the equipment and the medical care that you would need would be at the hospital. But blood is a perishable item. It doesn't grow on trees. We can't make it in a lab. So it can only come from somebody like a, a donor willing to, to give it. When a person does decide to give blood, you know, I, I understand there are several options. Can you please explain the difference between whole blood and power red and a platelet donation? And perhaps maybe if, if I missed one, you can explain that one as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's different ways that you can donate blood or blood products. Um, you mentioned whole blood. So um, that's basically just taking um, whatever comes out when we stick the needle in. It, it uh, has your blood flow into a bag and we bring it back to our lab and we can separate it into different parts. Um, we, we separate it into platelets, 
plasma and red blood cells. A power red donation is where we're able to take twice as many red blood cells and we return the rest of your blood product to you. So your platelets and your plasma go back into your body. It allows us to extract twice as many red blood cells. And uh, that's good for you know people who have the high demand blood types like type O that we're able to take more of those red blood cells from them. And then um, well, lastly, we also have platelet donation. And platelet donation is good because we can take two or three times the amount of platelets from you and return the rest of your blood to your body. Um, Platelets are in high demand for cancer patients. Anybody going through chemotherapy will need a lot of platelets to survive that process. Uh, So each product has um, very specific needs, and we would ask you to donate certain types depending on what your blood type is. All right, which goes to my next question. If if uh, your blood type had anything to do with uh, the type of donation that you're going to give. Yeah, each blood type kind of has its own special um, unique properties and ways that it can help patients. So based on what your blood type is, we might ask you to give a whole blood donation or a platelet donation or a power red donation. Okay. And what if you don't know your blood type? Can you find out there when you decide to give blood? Yeah, you don't need to know your blood type to to donate blood. And and actually, that's a a big benefit of going to donate blood is that you'll find out what your blood type is. So the Red Cross will let you know what your blood type is after your donation. And how many people can benefit from a single donation? We typically separate each donation into three parts, platelets, plasma, and red blood cells. Those different components can go to different kinds of patients. Um, depending on what their medical needs are. Your platelets could go to a cancer patient. Your red blood cells might help someone who's in a car accident. And your plasma could potentially help a burn victim. Um, So your one donation has the potential to help save up to three different lives. It's pretty cool. Wow. And only 3% of the population uh, in the United States right now uh, decide to donate, meaning that it could be more. And how many more lives can you save if, if more people decided to donate? Uh, if we could increase that even by 1% to to say that 4% of the population donates, that would go a long way to eliminating blood shortages and just making sure every patient gets the best medical treatment possible. And what's the shelf life of uh, blood products? Blood does have a shelf life. Um, it, it can't be saved forever. It um, generally needs to be used within about 40 days. So we can't stockpile it and, and have a, a huge... Uh, amount of blood waiting for, um, you know, a a major accident where we will need to use it. Um, It needs to be collected and used in a just-in-time scenario so that uh, it doesn't ever outdate. This is Closer Look. I'm Rafael Sierra here with Rodney Wilson telling us all about the American Red Cross. Rodney, what are the desired levels of inventory at the blood bank? And, And can you please tell us where are they now? Well, the Red Cross ideally... Uh, strives to keep five days supply of blood on hand or more um, so that we can be prepared for any type of emergency situation. We're not in an emergency situation at this point, which is good um, with, with supplies being relatively stable, but we want to encourage people to continue to donate so that um, those supplies main, maintain being stable. From the time you donate blood to the time it's used is usually about three to five days. So um, you know, you give blood on Monday by Friday, that's typically transfused to a patient. So you can see that the blood doesn't sit around on our shelves very long. It's, it's in and out. And that's why we continually need more donors to make sure that the supply continues to be stable. And what factors must one consider before donating? Uh, you know, for, you know, like health, uh, prescriptions, travel, tattoos, acupuncture, et cetera. Or, or should that even be a reason for you not to consider donating? Well, there are some eligibility criteria to donate blood. You have to be a minimum of 110 pounds, um, 17 years old, and, and general good health. And then there may be some things that might make you need to wait to donate later, such as certain medications that you're taking, international travel. Um, those might make you need to wait for anywhere from 3 to 12 months. To donate blood. Um, tattoos generally are not, um, there's no deferral. 
uh, for you to donate blood after you receive a tattoo, as long as it's applied in a licensed tattoo facility. Um, so there, there are some things that might make you need to wait to donate blood. But uh, if you don't know if you're eligible to give blood, we encourage you to just go to a blood drive and present to donate. And um, a Red Cross staff person will walk through your own eligibility with you to determine if you're a good candidate. And given COVID-19 restrictions, how safe is it now to donate? The Red Cross has lots of safety precautions in place. Everyone wears masks and uses hand sanitizer throughout the process. We check everyone's temperature before they enter a blood drive, including our own staff and volunteers. We wipe down every donor touch point between donations. And um, everything is spaced further apart than you would see in typical times. The donor beds, the health history stations... Um, So it's a clean, safe, and sterile environment for you to come and donate blood. Tell us about plasma donations pertaining to the pandemic. How important is that right now? Well, one of the treatments that um, the FDA has approved for COVID-19 patients is convalescent plasma. And this is plasma that is taken from individuals who've recovered from COVID-19, and it carries antibodies that fight that virus. And then doctors are able to transfuse that to patients who are currently critically ill with the coronavirus. So part of what we're doing at the Red Cross is we're encouraging people, if you know that you have recovered from COVID-19, we encourage you to come and donate blood um, because we're testing your blood for those COVID-19 antibodies. And if you test positive for those antibodies, uh, we can use that the plasma from that donation to treat current COVID patients. Wow. Well, that's just another perfect way to help out your neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. And many people don't know if they may have had coronavirus. Um, So it's a benefit to you as a donor that you will receive um, the antibody test and you'll get the results afterwards. So it, it will tell you if you have perhaps come into contact with the virus and never even realized that that happened. This is Closer Look. I'm Rafael Sierra, here with Rodney Wilson with the American Red Cross. So, Rodney, what do you think are the biggest reasons uh, why people shy away from donating blood? Most people, I think, are afraid of the needle. They're afraid that it's going to be painful. Um, I can tell you that giving blood is not a painful process, and really there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, When you donate blood, it's about an hour of your time for your whole process, and you're only on the donor bed for maybe 10 minutes. When the needle enters your arm, you feel a quick pinch, and then you don't feel pain after that. There's no discomfort or pain as you donate. And uh, within 10 minutes, the needle is out of your arm and you're done and and you're moved on to uh, the snacks, cookies and goodies that everybody (laughs) enjoys after they after they donate, but um, really nothing to be afraid of. It shouldn't be a reason for you not to donate. Absolutely. I, um, I've stood next to so many people on the donor bed who were first time donors, had never done it before. And I could see the, the fear in their eyes um, right before the needle was inserted. Um, and I've talked them through it. And so many of them have said, wow, that was nothing. I, I wish I would have gotten over this fear years ago. I hyped it up in my head and, and it really wasn't bad at all. So when someone does decide to donate, uh, is it easy to do so? Absolutely. Um, a blood donation is about an hour of your time. Um, you basically just need to find a blood drive near you, schedule an appointment. It's quick and easy. What do you think is the biggest reason somebody should go out and give blood today? Well, statistics show that 97% of us know someone who is alive because they received a blood transfusion. So that touches almost every single one of us. So I would encourage you to think about who in your life might be alive because they received blood. Uh, In my own life, my father received blood. My grandmother received blood. My brother received blood. If you think about these people, um, the fact that they would be gone from your life if no one donated blood, uh, it just tells you why this is important and why more people should be doing it. And for those wanting to know more about the American Red Cross and, you know, the different blood donation centers, where can they go to get more information? You can go to redcross.org. Um, from there, you can type in your zip code and that will help you find blood donation opportunities near you. You can put in a date range um, that you want to find blood drives uh, and schedule an appointment online. 
Ronnie, before we conclude, is there anything else you'd like our listeners to remember about the American Red Cross, about blood donations? You know, perhaps something that you think it's important for them to remember. Um, if you think about how you can make a difference, 